Good evening, people. Watch Woman 65. Lisa Voice, I'm going to give you the gospel. This is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, and future. Was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith. In Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel. That's how we're saved. No other way. Someone once again commented and wrote me and asked, well, what about baptism? Okay. Let me get this. I haven't hit on this in a while. Water, if you're talking about, now, baptism is an open statement. If you're talking about baptism, are you talking about water baptism? Because water baptism is not required for salvation. Let's get that straight. Water will not save you. You can drink water, but water will not save you. You will go down in water, a dry center, and come up a wet center. It has nothing to do with salvation. And people will direct me back to, let me see, Matthew, probably part of Acts, which <laughs> Acts is a transitioning book. Now, this is where dispensations come in. Dispensations come in where there's timelines. What is God, who is God talking to? Who is this verse referring to? So people want to always take me back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, let me get this straight. And if you want an extensive Bible study about dispensations, go to Robert Breaker's channel because he breaks it down perfectly. That's how I learned dispensations. That's how I learned that the Bible, the Bible became crystal clear to me. You're talking about a different time frame. Water baptism is not needed for salvation. Let's get that straight. Now, if you're talking, when people write me and say, well, what about baptism? Well, you're automatically baptized with the Holy Spirit the moment you accept Christ as Savior. Water has nothing to do with it. <laughs> nothing. Nothing to do with it. The Holy Spirit indwells in you. Now, let me finish this gospel. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever, here's the key word and here's what throws everybody off, whosoever believe in him will not perish. The key word is believe. Will not perish but have eternal life. It's not whosoever gets water baptized. It's not whosoever can speak in tongues. It's not whosoever joins the church. It's not whosoever any of that. It's not whosoever repents of every sin that they've ever committed, which they cannot do. Is whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. You put your faith and trust in him and you accept Christ as Savior. When you accept Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. Not only are you saved, but you're rapture ready. Now that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're rapture ready justified by the blood of Jesus and sealed until the day of redemption according to Ephesians 4 which means you will not lose your salvation you are sealed once saved always saved people come against that every day I don't really care it's right there in the Bible they have a problem with it I suggest they take it up with God simple as that the Holy Spirit indwells in you the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit will change you. That's the gospel right there. No, water baptism has nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, no works of the flesh have nothing to do with it. Now, if you feel the need after you get saved, if you so feel the need, oh, I just feel like I want to get water baptized, go ahead. But it's not going to save you. Nor is it going to keep you saved. It is faith in Christ alone. 
It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, in Christ alone, through faith in Christ. It is faith in Christ. It's not nothing you can do, it's not nothing you can earn. People still are on this kick, this close, this close to being raptured. They're still confused about salvation. It's unbelievable. But that's the way it is. Excuse the beanie, my hair got wet, so I put it on. I didn't want to do anything else to it, so I just put this on. So, anyway, um, and it is a beanie. I, I had a cat one, but I don't know what I did with it. It must have got lost in the move or something. Anyway, um, this is off of Hal Turner. So, this is, um, oh. And I'm, I, I got my new um, Telegram address in the description box, so you will see that. Um, I love Telegram. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But anyway, um, China is moving nuclear missiles in public. Now, I, I think I put something on this on Telegram. But this is off of Hal Turner, and this came out earlier. It says, on Friday night, the People's Republic of China was seen moving nuclear missiles out in the open, in the open, toward their eastern coastline. And I think, like I said, I think I put something like that on Telegram. I'm not sure, but these are medium-range nuclear missiles. They're called carrier killers. So, they are designed to destroy aircraft carrier strike groups and their range makes it possible for them to hit anywhere in the country of Japan as well. And there's video with this uh, article. The file photo shows the missiles on their vehicles in daylight at some point in the past and not related to the rest of the story below. The, um, this is not related to the rest of the story below, but seen in the video above, and you're going to see this. China's DF-26 missiles on transporter uh, launcher trucks. This is something. They're seen traveling the public streets of uh, the Fujian province, eastern China. China, China is not going to nuke Taiwan. Don't, so don't even, don't even think that because they want Taiwan. But as they move physically to take Taiwan, they are making certain that, guess who? The United States knows to stay out of it. While these missiles, with these missiles, China can uh, attack and destroy all USS, uh, US carrier, aircraft carrier strike groups and destroy any naval force seen sent by Japan. The, the missiles are also fully capable of reaching anywhere inside of Japan to destroy that country as well. Japan is our ally. Why not destroy them? According to them. But they don't want to destroy Taiwan. They want to take Taiwan as their own. Now there's a chart here describing their cruise missiles. And you can see this in the description box. Now, this is this analysis, and it's a very good analysis. And once again, I think I put another story, I think it's off the sun on Telegram about this as well. But what no one is telling Americans is that Taiwan has a very, very serious history to it. And one of my subscribers, Mike, me and him were talking about this. In World War II, Japan invaded China. China conquered a huge amount of Chinese territory, and that invasion took place from the island we now call Taiwan. Back then, the island was named Formosa. So China, as a matter of its own security, cannot and will not allow that island to become a sort of garrison island for some foreign force. Remember when I talked about honor? Because anything on that island could be used 
as the basis for another actual invasion of China. That's the national security concern for China when it comes to Taiwan. The other reason China wants firm and unquestioned control of Taiwan are two things. It's simple, money and power. The economy of Taiwan is built on semiconductors, computer chips. Why else would they want it? Whoever controls that is automatically a major world economic power. After all, nothing in the world these days operates without a computer chip. Your washer and dryer don't even operate without a computer chip. Nothing does. So whoever controls the manufacturer of most computer chips also controls a lot of other things worldwide. As for money, Taiwan has a robust economy because of its work ethic and its modern manufacturing of a very needed product computer chips. So money is another big factor in what China is doing over Taiwan. And recent visit by Nasty, which I got another article too, and I think I have that on Telegram as well. Um, the recent visit by uh, her strikes China on all these issues. Her visit and the U.S. military aid to Taiwan make it look like the island is becoming garrisoned for U.S. military interests. Control of computer chip manufacturing and the money that generates it also at risk if Taiwan is alienated from China. So her visit struck at China's national security, computer chip manufacturing control and money. Of course, China's pushing back very hard. History records that Helen of Troy had a face that launched a thousand ships. History may also record that a Nasty had the face that started World War III. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I'm going to link this in the description box because it has the maps and everything here so you can see this. This is interesting to say the least. I will be back. Thank you for your support. Thank you for suggesting telegram you guys are awesome you're my family i love you and god bless you just stay strong in these last final hours days and i will continue to pray for you guys um i love telegram i think i thank you for it like i said it could replace my blog so i don't know yet but uh i'll be back later because i have uh, I got the other news coming out too. Thank you.